E, I'm Marina Joshi. In Egypt, fresh clashes have broken out once again between protesters and security forces with troops firing tear gas and rubber bullets into crowds massing around Tahrir Square. Well, over the weekend, the violence claimed at least 13 lives. The protesters are demanding the military rulers transfer power to an elected civilian government. Our correspondent Paul Slier is on the ground and can bring us more. Well, Paul, I understand that under the circumstances, the situation may change any time. But uh, what are you seeing there? Do bring us up to date with the situation on the ground. Well, the anger and the numbers continue to mount here in Tahrir Square. I would say that there are easily several thousand protesters who are now clashing with security forces. Both the police and the army have been firing tear gas. They've been firing rubber bullets. And just a short time ago, they hit a residential building. Now, the building burst in flames. There were at least a dozen ambulances that were brought in. And we're just hearing figures. These are preliminary figures that at, as at least 20 people have now been killed in the last three days of clashes. This is Tahrir Square. It is the scene of the revolution back in February that ousted the Egyptian president Hosni Mubarak. And as you can see, the crowd unruly, the numbers slowly growing. Certainly, the numbers we're seeing now are increasingly more than we saw in the early hours of this morning. The sense you get here is that there is going to be continuous violence because the mood is incredibly tense. There are sporadic clashes that continue to happen. And the fear among most protesters here is that all their hopes and all their dreams of what that first revolution back in February would achieve have all but been forgotten. What people here have been telling me is that they're going to remain in Tahrir Square until such time that the military that is currently in power steps down. And for weeks now, in fact for months, youngsters have been trying to reclaim Tahrir, but they haven't been able to do so. The fact that they are now back in Tahrir Square is very much a sense and a message to themselves and the Egyptian authorities that that they plan to stay. Well, aside from the clashes that are taking place now, uh, as uh, you know, we were looking behind you, uh, live pictures there. Um, Paula, uh, what has it been like in the country post uh, Mubarak when he was ousted in February? Has anything in the country changed? And what has changed if that happened at all? Well, talking to people here, they say that this is the reason why they've taken to the streets, for the very fact that they feel nothing has changed. They criticize the current ruling military regime as being much the same as the Mubarak era. They say it's a regime that hasn't given a date in terms of when it plans to step down. They say that the elections, the parliamentary elections that are now being planned for next week, Monday, will not be free and fair. And this is a sentiment I've heard from dozens of people that I've managed to speak to here in Tahrir Square. So they say say that they've lost faith in the military. They believe that the military is not going to keep true to its word to, to step down and allow a real representative government to come into place. And this is why they're taking to the streets. They don't want the international community or the Egyptian public to be fooled by any kind of promises that are coming from the military. And certainly this is raising concerns in the international community. Many Western countries had their hopes on the fact that there would be some kind of new regime here in Egypt. What we're seeing happening is groups like the Muslim Brotherhood putting their voice and their strength behind these demonstrations, raising concerns that there will be a strong Islamist presence as this country moves forward. All right, Paul, thanks for uh, bringing us up to speed with what's happening in the Egyptian capital, Cairo, at the moment. Paul